Yeah, it's been, uh... Oh, sorry. It didn't start. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. We'll start again. <laughs> great, great warm-up. Great warm-up. <laughs> great warm-up, okay. Oh. you here from the West Gym and let's just talk about this uh, Simon Fraser University men's basketball team a narrow win over Alaska Jake you had a chance to call that game where is this Simon Fraser team right now as we really get into the meat of the GNS schedule well it's a pretty interesting game because we're playing an Alaska team that you know had seven players playing the game yeah. and then two get hurt and as if you didn't quite pull away until uh, the later stages of the game but I think you're seeing resilience. I think, you know, you saw that against UBC earlier, where you know, Jazz Singh, a good example, of someone who's not playing, how do you make up for that, you know, 16, 17 point effort? And how do you do that? You do it with Julian Roche, you do it with Will Pilata, uh, their new transfers, Jamal Wright, Jordan Lyons. So overall, uh, you know, a win is a win, maybe not the best performance, but they did come away with a win. And they're climbing the standings, and you know, as we said, they haven't played that many games. So hopefully, uh, another win tonight at home for SFU. Hey, Jazz Singh, let's talk about him. He, he's a, he's a kid from this area. He's from Lander. Hey, he's he's the BC product that has really shone in this largely non-BC Simon Fraser lineup over the course of the last few years. Talk about his his situation injury-wise, where he sits. He's averaging 13.6 a game, and when he's healthy, they are a different team. It's going to be tough to not have him, but just where is Jazz Singh at right now? So the Jazz Singh right now, he's a game away from essentially his eligibility uh, kicking in for this year. So if he plays another game, then this will be his last season at Simon Fraser. And I think he wants to be 100% whether, you know, uh, for him at this point, you don't want to commit and then have an injury or maybe not be 100% and then really miss uh, a full season. He wants to be there, uh, full gear, ready to go. So I think they're being very cautious and they're rehabbing it. And uh, that distinction hasn't been made if he's going to play, but I would say it looks like maybe he will play towards the, the tail end of the season and hopefully in the playoffs. And there's a heavy volume of games, you know, have him healthy for that last stretch if he can get in there. It's going to be absolutely huge if he elects to play. Uh, we certainly love what he brings. It's interesting, and I was thinking about this today as I went through my day, that, you know, when we played the, U when Simon Fraser played that game against UBC, Wilford Bellata, a guy who loves to play in the paint, up, you know, in the front court and really gets a lot of good things done, rebounding-wise, toughness-wise, he was hurt, he was out of the lineup at that point. So we really haven't seen everybody together, but you watched Will down the stretch drive, He's right in front of us here at our broadcast location getting into this game. And he had some huge moments down the stretch, some big rebounds down that uh, stretch drive. Just talk about what he means to this team. Well, and it wasn't even just the rebounds. It was his three-point ability. And, and, you know, he really wants to round out his game. He's a really strong physical guy. He looks like a linebacker. Uh, he looks like he can play in, uh, for SFU football as well. But he's a guy that I think he just, instead of just being a clanger and banger, he's a guy that can, you know, Occasionally mix in a, a 15 footer or an 18 footer, but also last game uh, really proficient from three So again, like we we're talking about an SFU team That's probably on paper the best team they've had since joining the NCAA And he's a huge part of that just because he affects every phase of the game six foot four two ten from Quebec and uh I know when he first got here to Simon Fraser, we'd see him uh, look like a bit like the deer in the headlights. I mean, he would come out, be want to be really physical, and he'd get into foul trouble so early. He's reined that in, and it's just great to see him now evolving, you know, into this real special player that we're going to see. So with Jazz Singh out of the lineup, Julian Roche as well has been having a tremendous year. Uh, I documented, you know, his his physical 
battles through, you know, losing a lot of weight, really getting down to being this lean guy who is really effective in so many different parts of the court. What have you seen from Julian? And obviously, we've all noticed the, the fact that he's dropped all his weight. Yeah, I mean, it might be the biggest transformation I've ever seen yeah. <laughs> from a player at SFU because he's lost, you know, I think it maybe 60 to 70 pounds, like you said. What I've noticed with him is he's just such a smart basketball player. So, one, his availability has increased tremendously. Like, we're talking about him just being, uh, I wouldn't say a liability, but uh, there was games last year where he'd only get about five, six minutes of time because he couldn't move the way they needed him to move. Now he's on the court virtually the entire game. He's that important. But it's his playmaking ability from the post as well. He's able to find open guys in the corner. He's a great passer too, yeah. Exactly. But... It's his ability to finish, it's his ability to block, his rebounding. He's a very complete player, and a guy, honestly, I could see playing a number of years, uh, you know, maybe even in Europe, like a, a, oh, real, I think a so. real pro's pro. The last guy I want to ask you is we've got about a minute to go here. So quickly, just your thoughts on the point guard situation here. David Penny assuming that role on a full-time basis this year and really does look like the leader they were looking for, doesn't he? And, in, and David's the guy who I think he's one of the main uh, guys in the weight room, a uh, guy bringing the team together, off-season workouts during that COVID year, it was David Penny, the guy who's bringing everyone together and saying, hey guys, let's not just waste this year, let's use this opportunity. And uh, I've, what we've seen has been uh, nothing short of great. He's been uh, a leader uh, on the defensive end as well with steals, great playmaker, good shooter, and he has a great backup in Elliot uh, DeMacalingan. Uh, who is really shooting the three ball well, and we'll get into that as this game pro progresses. Just getting ready for the uh, the anthems and the player introductions here. We will let you know, this is the first of eight games in a span of 18 days for this team. When I added that up, I thought, my golly, is that correct? And it certainly is because of all the cancellations. So, boy, this team is really going to find out who they are over the course of the next, uh, you know, two and a half weeks. We'll take a short break here. For the anthems and the player introductions, we'll be back for the opening tip. Jacob Hall, Howard Samura, West Jim, be back with more uh, in just a moment. And your seven Fraser University men's basketball team. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, would you ask that you please wrap your hands and please approve all games for the white and the American and the new national anthem.
Starting tonight at guard, number one, Zach Paulson. Starting guard, number three, Sharif Dunn. Starting guard, number four, Harry Kimmel. Starting guard, number 13, Devontae Muffin. And starting forward, number 24, Sean Anderson. And coach of the Falcons, currently with assistant coaches, Kimberly Mazio, Kate Colosimo, Kevin Johnson, and George Parker. And now, tonight's starting lineup for SFU. Here begins at point guard, standing 6-1, a sophomore from Guam, Ontario. Now introduced here to the crowd at the West Gym for Seattle Pacific number one, Zach Paulson, number three, Sharif Khan, number four is Harry Cavill, Devontae Moffat, the leading scorer on this team, wearing number 13, and Shaw Anderson, the big man down low, wearing number 24, four, Simon Fraser, Julian Roche, Wolford Balada, the point guard David Penny, Drew Bryson, and Jamal Wright wearing number 15. Making up the starting five as we get set for the opening tip here. And the Seattle Pacific team coming off of an impressive win over Western Washington, 78 to 59. They lower the Vikings mark to one and three in the GNAC season, improved to three and three. So a great job coming in on a two-game win streak, also a win, a narrow win over St. Martin's. So they've been doing a terrific job here over the last little while, compiling that three and three record, playing their best basketball of the season. Should be uh, Anderson and Roche doing the duty here. Actually, it's not. It's Harry Cavill doing the opening jump. David Penny in control here for Simon Fraser. The opening tip, finding Roche. The quick look down low to Balada. Will in the post up. Does the spin move. Double team comes. And uh, I think Will Balada is going to be a, a favorite target down there for, for all the uh, rest of the guys on this team. Absolutely, and that's that patented spin that he's been doing a lot. Uh, not successful there, though but just brings that low center of gravity, that strength down low, can play much bigger than he is. Here's Bryson. Quickly back up top to Penny. Just underway here at the West Gym. Roche playing some catch with Penny on the perimeter. Shot clock down to seven for Penny. Kicks it across to Bryson, and he steps on the end line, so Simon Fraser will turn it over. <laughs> and well, can we hear, we can hear Steve Hansen <laughs> saying, just shoot the ball. <laughs> Too much ball, like usually it's a good thing to have that much ball movement, but not in that instance. <laughs> I totally get you there, Jake. Yeah, just just to <laughs> simplify things here. Get a shot and get things going here. So now it's Seattle Pacific, our first look at them. There's Cavill who will put up a shot and he will swish that, doing just what Steve Hansen wanted his SFU players to do. And how how is SFU going to answer here? Maybe with the three of their own. We'll see what happens here. Here's Bryson. Skipping it down low, looking for Roche. Taken away in Cavill and the Falcons will come back up the floor. Shaw dispossessed of the ball. Bryson right down the court. He gets rejected at the other end of the floor. A great take down the floor by Zach Paulson, the point guard. This is a tough start for SFU. That's four turnovers if you include the block. Not good enough for SFU. Yeah, they got to make more of their possessions here. Bryson running hard. Flops it out of bounds. But Paulson at the other end of the floor came out of nowhere to reject Bryson. So some great energy here. The guys wearing the road blocks from Seattle Pacific. Shaw Anderson. Quick pass there to the team scoring leader Moffitt. He can't find the finish. 
Simon Fraser are coming up the floor looking for their first points of the game. Pallotta directing traffic. Working off the row screen. Wilford with a handle to skip down low. Scramble for that loose ball and once again the Falcons with possession. It's another turnover, Howie. Five turnovers for Simon Fraser in the early moments. It's no wonder they haven't scored. The big three ball hoisted there by Anderson off the mark. They get the offensive rebound. Three ball from the corner. Anderson can't get that one to go. Simon Fraser still searching. Jamal Wright and a tip there by Julian Roche. You know, just seeing the turnovers, you'd expect the score to be uh, <laughs> way bigger than 3-2, but here we are. Yeah, the only uh, Seattle Pacific points off the Cavill three. Having a little trouble seeing here. We've got a referee and a coach right in our, our view here from the sidelines. Here's Cavill moving the ball quickly. Great ball movement here for Anderson. He hits the front rim and a lot of skies for the rebound. Simon Fraser with a chance, time, uh, an opportunity to take a lead here. Sorry about that, Jake. How do we get to the line? Wilford penetrated, went to an open wing and pretty much threw it into the crowd there. Yeah. Quickly off the inbounds, here come the Falcons. Paulson gets on the floor quickly to Anderson. They'll move it around here. Devonte Moffitt ran into foul trouble against the Vikings. Didn't get to get that offensive game going. He is a terrific player. The team's leading scorer challenged as he drives to the basket. The importance of having someone like Julian Roche in the middle. No easy buckets with him. Julian is going to get called for the foul, but you're right, Jake. He wasn't going to give up the easy basket. Contesting the shot there is Devonte Moffitt. Went hard to the rack, the 6-2 guard, the senior from Spanaway Lake, Washington. And this is a great free throw shooting team overall. Moffitt shoots 74% from the free throw line. He's 69 of 93 on the season heading in. And I jinxed him there, he missed the second. And Demaculangan, number 20. And talking about good shooters, a leading three-point shooter by percentage. And he's hit some big shots for them this year. Kamaki Lang, and there he is with the basketball. Penny. Guarded by Kahn. Thoreau screen there for Penny. Back to Julian. And another turnover by SFU. I think you're going to see a timeout here pretty, pretty soon. I think uh, Coach Hansen getting a little frustrated as he paces the sidelines near our broadcast location. Moffitt to the corner. The jumper for three just off the mark there. Simon Fraser lucky Seattle Pacific can't get it going, but they will get a Cavill dunk. Oh, wow. That, <laughs> this is not a good start for us. If you, I know the score isn't that big, but I mean... Four turnovers, five turnovers, pardon me. This is just not good enough. Well, if they can keep it a two-possession deficit, they've got to be happy until they get their act together here. But you got to credit Seattle Pacific, too, in their tenacious defense here early. Here's Penny. Shot clock hits 10. He pulls up for three, and he knocks it down. Probably going to count that as a two, excuse me. Creating, creating his own offense here, David Penny. I agree with you there. They had to get something, so the point guard takes charge there and rises for the big shot. Anderson under for Cavill and he gets fouled. And you're impressed by Harry Cavill. Many are the 6'6", 210 out of Kaiser, Oregon. And uh, listening to the broadcast last time out, Harry Cavill is eighth in Seattle Pacific University scoring history. I mean, that's the kind of career this guy has had. So just a tremendous player. And looking at SFU right now, I mean, just we're watching this offense. I mean, there's a lot of movement, but it's not ending in anything productive. It's, uh, you know, balls off the knees, balls out of bounds, Aaron passes across the court, and that's just not going to cut it. Now, again, we're looking at the score kind of in disbelief. Sure. Six four, but <laughs> no. it, it is kind of amazing to me that the score is what it is right now. But for SFU, you've got to make good at some point because SPU is a really good team, and they can pull away quick, as we've seen against... You know, Western and against uh, St. Martin's. They're a team that can win. SFU got to smart up. 
And your 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 manual t um, tally of turnovers is bang on. Five turnovers in the early going here. So Simon Fraser's got to take care of the basketball. <laughs> There's no question what they're talking about in the huddle, Jake. Uh, wh what do you put that down to in the early going? I mean, I, I, I tend to think, you know what? There's great energy being shown by the defense on the other side. And, and perhaps, you know what? It's not the most familiar group of five for them to come out and start a game because you've got, you know, Jamal Wright in there now. The dynamics change. Pilatus come back from an injury. Uh, I think they just need time to kind of work things through and just get a bit more familiar with each other. For sure, and I think, again, maybe it's trying too hard, too. Like, there's that one play from Julian where he took a screen and he tried to throw it across the court with his left hand, and he's a really good distributor, but that's a tough pass for anybody to make. So, whereas if you simple the, you know, simplify the game, get in the post, do some work with, uh, you know, Julian and now uh, Jordan Lyons. Jordan Lyons wearing number five, and he's been instant offense uh, at least earlier in the season coming off the bench was so effective uh, you think back to that ubc game here the buchanan cup crosstown rivalry game he was tremendous in that basketball game here's cavill now look at this uh seattle pacific team from the free throw line 74 percent 89 percent 78 percent 83 percent 72 like they are a great free throw shooting team they shoot 78 percent as a team and Simon Fraser as we mentioned yeah they struggle they're shooting 62% as a team so you look at those little things making a difference they are not missing from the strike Simon Fraser now with the basketball to skip down to Balada well again in that post up position the double team comes quickly that's what you got to do kick it out for the three and they get it from David Teddy Great feed from Will Bellotta to find through, or uh, pardon me, David Benny. Yeah, and Will remembered early in the game, first time he went post up in that same position, he didn't react to that double team, missed them the quick dish out of it. Great moves underneath by Cavill, can't get it to go, and Simon Fraser, great team defense underneath. Penny again, bringing the ball over half court. Set in up in the half court. Here's Jordan Lyons, the handoff play to Demaki Langan. Back to Roche. Roche will feed the post. That's Lyons underneath. Skipped it. Maybe had a shot opportunity there, but uh, shot clock now down to 10. Bellotta with the post up on the other side. Comes across the paint. He puts up a hook shot and scores it. They scored it. They found a way to score it. <laughs> and that's just his power and strength, willing that to go in, but... Great finish from Will. Yeah, you see how the ball doesn't stop when Will puts it on the floor. He just is so strong underneath the basket. Take to the basket, and they will move it around the horn again. Moffitt is going to be successful on that drive. Devontae Moffitt comes in averaging 14 point, or rather 17.2 points per game. He's their leading scorer and really needs to be a big factor for Seattle Pacific, who have taken a 10 to 9 lead here intense action here they skipped down by Lions Julian ends up on his rear end couldn't corral that one again that was a bit of a, a tough pass for for Julian to corral but you got to think as if their offense whatever they're trying to call it's just not working right now their their buckets are coming from second chance rebounds and just going hard to the paint well we'll see if they can't get a little bit more cohesion here but uh Seattle Pacific now with the basketball. Big three ball hoisted in and out there for Samore. That's Blackman off the bench. He can't hit it either. So they are, while Simon Fraser is struggling, they are struggling from three out of Seattle Pacific. Roche got raked underneath the basket there by, Ma, by uh, Paulson and no call. That's a foul. I think anytime he goes up. <laughs> Looked like the Grayson Al Allen uh, call from last night in the Milwaukee game. Okay. <laughs> Yet the uh, Seattle Pacific got one there. So Moffitt now with the basketball. That's Amore, the big man, setting the high screen for Moffitt. He's going to go right to the rack again. Great defense there by Lyons. And here's Blackman. Gets it back to Moffitt. Working on Mastandrea. Turnaround shot. Simon Fraser doing some good things defensively. At this end of the court, there's a skip down low. Lyons. Mastin Trail, everyone's slipping, everyone's losing their footing on the floor. But it's going to be turned over. Yeah, again, that's a few. Just can't get out of their own way right now. I can't really get the momentum going. 
We'll see if they can't get it going here, but you're, you're right about that. And it's it, despite everything, it's a one point game. And that's Khan, Sharif Khan. To Anderson. Handoff for the three, and I believe that was Blackman with the miss there. Quickly down the floor comes Simon Fraser. And Damatia Langman will lay it up at it. 11 to 10 the score. Simon Fraser taking the lead. Khan to the baseline and and that is Paulson able to lay it up and in. Simon Fraser now on the half court Lions. Mask Andrea. Roche to Penny. David right through the key. Great look for the flush and Julian Roche will lay it down and slam it home 13 to 12. Great ball movement by Simon Fraser. Amore to Matthew Langan. And the jumper there from Anderson, he knocks down the triple. So a nice answer there from Seattle Pacific. They will take the 15-13 lead. Here's to Maculangan in the half court to Penny. Penny elects to go right to the rock. He lays it off the glass and can't get it to go. And Simon Fraser held off the score sheet, trailing by two. Here's a more a jump stop off the window, and he's going to score it. He goes right to the window, lays it up and in. So a four point lead. Right now for Seattle Pacific, largest of the game. Here's Mastandrea. Handing off the penny. To Maculangan. Julian for three from the top. Too strong. And Seattle Pacific pushing the tempo, getting great things to happen in the half court. Con to Paulson. Timeout called on the floor here, 9.52, just past the midway mark. Uh, we'll take a short break here and be back right after this. And we're back with you here at the West Gym. We're going through some technical difficulties on our two-man crew here. So apologies as we try to iron through those situations. All hang in here to do the play-by-play -play on this game. But uh, my broadcast partner, Jacob Hall, having a little bit of trouble hearing my voice through his headset. So we will go with a one-man team here until we iron that out. And our apologies to you out there in the listening audience. 17-13 is the score. Simon Fraser trailing in with the basketball, trying to get into an offensive rhythm here. As Jake said, just a ton of turnovers early to Mackie Langan, their leading three-point shooter, 
and Elliott cues up a three ball and knocks it down. He comes into this game shooting 42.9%. He's now 13 of 29 on the year. Demacu Langan with a big triple there to make it a one point game. Falcons with Cavill. Dijon City, number 12 into the game now. And that's uh, Sharif Khan from the baseline corner. He'll rattle that one home. And just when Simon Fraser pulls to within one, here come the Falcons again with a big basket. The Mackie Langan with the basketball. Thought about a three, now quickly to Balada. Will drives into the paint. Muscles his way in, he's going to get that to go. I think Will wanted the call there, wanted an end one opportunity. But uh, his physicality doing huge things for Simon Fraser thus far in this basketball game. Good ball moving it once again by Seattle Pacific. That's Cavill. And that's Shaw Anderson to Kong for three. He can't get it to go. Lions initially couldn't squeeze it. Works hard and gets it back for his team. The Mackie Langan, they blew a tire at half court, but they'll slow it up and reset the offense here with 7.44 remaining in the opening half. The Mackie Langan goes to the corner. Bellotta for three off the mark, doesn't go. Simon Fraser will bring in their starting point guard, David Penny, at the next stoppage here. Moffitt, nice take to the basket off the screen, but couldn't get that shot to fall. So Simon Fraser with a chance to tie or take the lead in this instance here. Bellotta. Will has Shaw on him, great move, and Will is feeling it out there. He knocks down the shot to put his team up 21 to 20. Will Bellotta having a terrific first half. That's Khan. Cavill goes to Khan again. Sharif Khan, great look over his shoulder, finds Cavell for the dunk. And this game going back and forth, lead changes on every possession here. 6.30 left in the opening half. Demacu Langan coming out of the game. Penny will come in, but there is a timeout on the floor. We'll take a short break here and be back in just a moment from the West Gym. Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. We can still be resilient, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the world. Back with you here at the West Gym. Tense, tense game here. Nice crowd here on a Saturday night for GNAC men's basketball. Unfortunately, unable to render that technical situation to our satisfaction here, so we'll be a one-man crew the rest of the way, but uh, really excited to have Jacob Hall on as an analyst here uh, on the broadcast, and I will, we will endeavor to have that all worked out uh, for the next game if we can here. Simon Fraser. As we mentioned, the spate of turnovers to start this game, but they've cleaned it up a lot here over the last few possessions. And right now, the intensity building, and uh, you've seen what Will Bellotta is doing for this basketball team. I'm just trying to pe take a peek here to see what Will Bellotta has in this game. He's got seven points on three or four shooting. He's got a three included in there, so. Number 10 uh, is delivering a 10 out of 10 early in this game for Simon Fraser. He's out there along with Josiah Mastandrea, the guard from Terry Fox and Poco wearing number one. Jamal Wright as well, number 15, along with uh, Julian Roche and the point guard David Benny as we get underway here. 6.27 to the break. Here's Penny. 
Finds a lane, sweeping hook, unlucky not to score. Loose ball, Paulson couldn't grab it, but looks like Moffitt does. We mentioned Moffitt coming in averaging 17.2 points per game. And he loves to get to the rack, he can put it on the floor and he can soar as well. Amore to Harry Cavill. The Kaiser Oregon native splits the defense. Roche hangs with him. Julian, the seven-footer, moving so well through the paint. Sticks like glue to Cavill. Denies number four of the basket as Simon Fraser now with a chance to take the lead. Here is Bellotta. Well, the lob pass down low to Roche is going to result in a turnover, and that's a tough break for Simon Fraser. Devonte Moffitt, Spanaway Lake, Washington, number 13. Paulson back to Moffitt. Thought about measuring the three instead. Finds Anderson. Goes back up top, and that was Paulson was the three. It's not going to go. Roche finally squeezes it. Here's Penny. David Penny. To right. Will Bellotta. Shot clock now under 10. A little Roche in the paint. Julian has a more on him. And a foul finally called on the turnaround move there. Samore guarding Julian Roche. Jordan Lyons, Drew Bryson, number five and number 24, set the check in. For Simon Fraser as well. Coming in for number for uh, Seattle Pacific will be Sharif Khan, number three. As Roche rattles one home. It's going to be Wright and Mastandrea coming out of the game. Julian doing a terrific job from the free throw line. Puts his team up 23 to 22. 4.38 to the break. Every possession has some intensity. And that's great to see in the first half of a basketball game. There's a great feel here in the crowd. I think everyone else just happy Simon Fraser able to get a game underway here without a cancellation. Jump shot is going to go, and that is uh, Shaw Anderson the knocking down the triple for the 25 to 23 lead. Here's Lyons. Bryson. Back to Penny. Bryson gets it back. He's going to drive baseline. Spin move back up top to Penny. Has to leap to get that pass. Shot clock again down to nine. Simon. Needs to make a move here. Here's Penny. He's going to pull up for three. He's going to knock it down. David Penny. And they're going to call that a two. He's going to knock the game at 25. So Penny, as the shot clock winds down, rises, knocks down the clutch jump shot. Ball reversal. Always scooped up by SFU, but instead it goes back. Samoy fading is going to shoot it past Roche. It's a great job there by Kelton Samoy, the sophomore out of Portland in the Brighton Academy and a transfer from American University. 27-25 for Seattle Pacific. Mast Andrea set the check into the next stoppage for Simon Fraser. Here's Bryson for three. That's too strong off the back iron. Samoy or rather Anderson with the rebound. Quick take to the basket, Moffitt loves that spin move. He goes to Anderson, 4-3, rolls off the rim. Timeout called on the floor, we'll keep it right here. And we had said in our pregame show that this was the first of eight games in 18 days for Simon Fraser. I aired, it's actually the ninth first of nine games in 18 days and think of a, a typical season as being a 20 game schedule playing basically half of that over a span of 18 days let me run through this for you Simon Fraser will be at Central Washington for a 4 o'clock game on Tuesday so they go down to Ellensburg 
They're going to return, and next Thursday and Saturday, we'll have them for you right here from Simon Fraser. If you can't make it out on Thursday, they will once again host Central Washington, the second of a back-to-back -back against the Wildcats. On Saturday, Northwest Nazarene from Nampa, Idaho, will be the uh, opposition. A pair of 7 o'clock games. And that's three games. They then play at Alaska Anchorage and at Alaska Fairbanks, February the 3rd and the 5th. And then they are going to be hosting a three-game homestand for the week of February the 10th, starting against St. Martin's on the 10th, against Western Oregon on the 12th, and against Anchorage on the 14th. We know Fairbanks came in last Tuesday. Anchorage will be here for their half of the remake on February the 14th, Valentine's Day. That is nine games in 18 days. And as uh, Jacob Hall let you know at the start, we don't know the full status of Jazz Sin. Let's keep our fingers crossed that, you know, when he makes that return that he can, he's going to be nice and healthy. And he will be a needed, uh, much needed uh, relief, not only for his incredible skill, but just the numbers he will give the team. And the guys are going to be pretty tired by that point. Coming off the timeout, that is Paulson. They run it so well on the half court that he gets the layup 29 to 24. Back to a four point lead. A little mini 4 0 run here by the Falcons. Here's Balada. Now to Penny. Penny works off the Lions screen. The give and go to Lions. Quickly to the corner. Will for three. Oh, Balada. Good look underneath. Julian Roche able to clean up the garbage underneath. And Push that one home to cut the lead down to two. Here's Paulson down low. Anderson to Cavill. Back out to Kahn who's clobbered. He falls. I don't know what caught the backside there of Bellotta who didn't wasn't intentionally trying to do anything, but Kahn is much slighter in weight and Bellotta carries himself well out there. Khan literally bounced off of him and fell to the fell to the court and I believe it's going to be a three shot foul. Indeed it will be three. He makes the second of two, second of three rather. And here comes Khan for his third. And they will once again put that lead back up to four points with a make if he's successful. And we talked about what a free, good free throw shooting team they were. Sharif Khan came in shooting 93% from the free throw line. He's Nash-like from the free throw line and knocks down two of the three anyway. The added bonus of the ability to hit free throws and the way they play together as a team is what's keeping Seattle Pacific here with a 500 record in the conference as they head into play today. Here's Bellotta takes the lob underneath. And there is Roche able to once again use that height down low. First the tip, now a short little pass for the layup underneath and Simon Fraser keeps it to within a possession. Here's Moffitt. Devontae behind the back to Anderson. Fading, tough shot on the baseline for Anderson Shaw. Shaw Anderson, excuse me. And he makes that shot. The ceiling has been four points. Seattle Pacific has pushed it to four. Simon Fraser has cut into it various points here. We'll see if they once again can do that here with this possession. 102 left to the break. This time a quick turn and fade and doesn't draw iron there. Tough break there for Will Balada. Right down the lane comes Devontae Moffat. He's going to get fouled and get to the free throw line. The foul Well, the foul going against Elliot to Makilangan. And 
another make. There's not a lot of margin for error. This six point lead, the largest of the game here, coming in the final 45 seconds of the first half of play. Make a mistake against uh, Seattle Pacific and they make you pay from the stripe the old fashioned way. Here's a three ball hoisted and Josiah Mastandrea, that's his specialty, knocks it down, makes it a three point game. Down to 27 seconds left, shot clock off here in the West Gym. Here comes Devontae Moffitt and a timeout called by Seattle Pacific. So despite all their warts here in the opening half of play, Simon Fraser keeping themselves within striking distance for the second half, trailing by three. Largest lead of this game has been six points, and that shows you how competitive it's been here between these two teams. As we mentioned, heading in Seattle, Pacific is looking to stretch their GNAC win streak to three straight games. They beat St. Martin 68 to 65. Then they trounced Western Washington on Thursday in Bellingham at San Carver Gym 78 to 59. And so that's a terrific little two game win streak they carry in here and they want to keep that going. That's what Simon Fraser is trying to prevent them from doing. Leading scores on this team, Devontae Moffitt coming in at 17.2, Anderson with a Shaw Anderson at 13.7, and Harry Cavill at 13.4. They're double-digit average scoring leaders, and they've all been prominent players here in this opening half of play. That's one of them right there, Moffitt, the leading scorer. 14 seconds left here. Seattle Pacific is going to milk it for the last shot here if they can, or they go right to the rack, kick it, and here comes Cavill. He tried to lay it up and in, couldn't. Three seconds left. Here comes the Maculang, and he's going to pull up for the shot. It's good if it goes, and it's just off the mark. And that'll be the halftime score. 35 to 32, Seattle Pacific with a three-point lead here at the West Gym. Simon Fraser heading to the halftime locker room. They'll try and come up with a nice crisp start to the second half. We will take a break here and join you in about 10 minutes with the stats from the opening half and set you up for the second half. Howard Samara, Simon Fraser Basketball from the West Gym, back with more in a moment. Dear college sports, there's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal, and all we love about sports. We've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look through, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college sports. sports. reliability would be the biggest benefit of having a gondola. There are a lot of people that uh, take transit, SkyTrain, the buses, and uh, when there's snow and that cancels the bus, then I can't get up to campus, unless I walk. The idea of driving up the mountain when it's like that is terrifying. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get home safely or in a timely manner. This community is growing rapidly. We currently have multiple new residence buildings being built. There's a lot of people that live up here, or a lot of people that would like to transit up here. And so you're really talking about connecting Burnaby Mountain 
with the rest of the economy of the city of Burnaby. Well, I think the evidence is clear. We've got to get away from fossil fuels, be more efficient in how we do things day to day and uh, transit certainly seems to be one of those options to get people out of cars. If there was better transit up SFU, people would be more apt to come here and participate in different activities that are going around. If it were easier to get up to campus, I definitely think lots more people would be coming out to go watch like soccer games or football games that are up on campus. The gondola is more accessible to students and regular members of the public. It's quieter, it's cleaner, and it's faster. NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect. It's the name of the game.
Yes, yes, ten times. That, that, that was that was a, that was spirited. It, it, that, it, like there was no lack of emotion out there. Like right from the opening hit, it was pretty good. Look at the turnovers, eh? Seattle Pacific has one turnover. <laughs> the whole half. One turnover and they shoot shoot is great from the free throw line. Eh? Well, I mean, look at the difference, though. Like, what you're saying, like... Yeah, they're they're an old school. They're an old school basketball team. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, six, okay. 61%. No, and they go to the... And welcome back to the West Gym, everybody. Howard Samura, along with Jacob Hall, we solved our problems uh, technically. So Jake is back on the broadcast. And I, I know a uh, bit of a scrambly first half, Jake, but uh, some of your impressions coming away uh, in this 35-32 Seattle Pacific lead. Well, certainly a back and forth game. And again, SFU started with some turnovers, but uh, kind of climbed back into the game. And I think the story of the game is turnovers because Seattle Pacific, like we were talking about at half, one turnover. It's amazing compared to the eight for SFU. And again, SFU, I was actually surprised at their three-point efficiency as well. So Wilfred Pallotta hitting a three. Uh, Josiah Master, Master Andrea, <laughs> tough name. And Elliot DeMacalangan. So, I mean, for SFU, if they want to make some damage uh, in the playoffs, I think it comes down to their ability to do more than just feed Julian Roche the ball. they got to get that secondary scoring and not turn the ball over eight times. Yeah, some of those numbers, and we'll just run over them here. Eight turnovers for Simon Fraser, one turnover for Seattle Pacific. Points off of those turnovers uh, in that opening half, uh, favoring obviously 6 nothing uh, Seattle Pacific. The free throw trips and the aggressiveness of Seattle Pacific really showing through. Seven of nine from the stripe. Simon Fraser, two of two, but only making those two free throw trips over the entire uh, opening half of play. Leading scores. Balanced for Seattle Pacific, led by the nine points of Harry Cavill, eight from Sh um, Shaw Anderson, as well as five apiece from uh, Karif, um, Sharif Khan and uh, excuse me and uh, Devante Moffat, their leading scorer. Simon Fraser, led by the ten points, uh, six rebounds of uh, Julian Roche and seven apiece from Wilfred Bellata. Uh, and David Penny, Elliot Demaculangan coming off the bench with five points. So. Interesting, interesting, interesting in terms of how this game is going to shape up here over the second half of play. I love the energy Roche had. Uh, you know, you talked about the tips he got uh, down low. I think he really is becoming comfortable with being that way more versatile force for the Simon Fraser team. And I don't know if you notice this too, Howie. Like, when you watch him in the offensive end, he's at like this three-point line. Like, he's never, you know, it's not like, uh, like the 90s NBA type of center where he's in the low block and that's all he does and he's there to hurt you if you go to the rim like he's a guy that can really stretch the floor he can pass the ball distribute the ball well he's a very active defender i would you know you might argue that he's the most important player on this team and uh it's exciting to see him play like he is right now like 10 oh, points and at those second chance points too uh game savers really when you know, maybe it's a bad three attempt and you're just getting it off to try and escape the shot clock. And then he's there to get that, that you know, that plus one just to get you into the into the bonus there. Yeah, I agree with you. About two minutes here before we start play, I should ask you about Will Bolada because 
you know, Will's got this larger mantle of responsibility now, especially when you look at him on the offensive end. And I think that, you know, he's coming to grips with the fact that, you know, he wants to try and do everything. He wants to score it down low. He wants to, you know, face and shoot. He, and he, I think he can do it. But I think he's got to grow into it a bit. You know, he's really trying to do everything. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm very, very impressed. And, and I think he's going to get the opportunity this season to show everything that he's about, which is it's exciting for a player like that. Oh, it is. And, and he came into the year uh, a little banged up, too. He had uh, some lower body injuries, and he was just raring to go. And when he would, because again, he didn't even play in that UBC game, as we mentioned. And now he's kind of getting his wheels moving getting to the, the tempo that he needs to get to. And I think you're right. I think for him, he has to simplify his game a bit. Uh, he had a few heat check type of shots, that corner three where, you know, he had a hand in his face, maybe not the best shot, but he's a guy that can get his own rebounds. Like, he can just do it all on the offensive end. And I think his confidence is growing um, game by game by game. And I'm excited to see him come playoff time when he's fully healthy, fully ready. And he has a bunch of minutes under him, and he's going to play some really good basketball. It's interesting. Drew Bryson only played five minutes in that opening half, one of the starters. You look at uh, Elliot DeMacchio in the end, Josiah Mastandrea, real guard types, played 12 minutes, you know, in the each in that, in that first half of play. And there were t stretches where those two were out there with David Penny in a real three-guard look. I mean... It's a different look for Simon Fraser, but I think Mastandrea and Demacchi Langer, when you look at their ability to shoot the ball from the outside, they could be deadly if they get the ball moving in a, inside out. And I think that's why they're here. That's yeah. what Steve Hansen was so excited about when uh, Josiah transferred over here from uh, Capilano, I believe? Uh, Douglas. Uh, Douglas College, pardon me. That's what he wanted him for. He wanted that six-man, that sharpshooter, that guy that can get them. Uh, you know, if they're down big, he's a guy that can bring you back in the game. He's a really streaky shooter. And for Elliot, Elliot's, I think he's exceeded a lot of expectations from us just as a freshman to come in and look so comfortable. And again, in the UBC game, you have 2,000 people, and he's hitting <laughs> corner threes, and he's hitting the, the game-winning shot, really. Yeah. <laughs> so he's been fantastic so far, and that's a huge part to a deal their uh, assistant coach who brought him over from Toronto. Gotcha. No, it's been fun watching Elliot Timaki Langan for sure. And we should also mention for everything that Simon Fraser went through in that opening half, they did shoot 13 to 24 from the field, 54.2% as we get underway here in this second half. Here's Kong with the basketball. Moffat down low. Anderson, rather Cavill, will lay it in on the baseline. So quick, quick strike here for the five-point lead for Seattle Pacific. David Penny now to Will Bellotta. Bellotta, great drive to the basket. Trying to get post-up position underneath and draws the contact. And you saw some of that late in that game when he went to the free throw to ice the game with those two late free throws. Will Belotic, once he gets that ball and gets you up in the air, he's got the advantage, doesn't he? Yeah, and he's so strong. He can finish through contact, and, you know, sometimes he can even hit that three-point play. Great to see him gaining that confidence down low to continue to make that a huge part of his game. He starts off with a make there from the stripe. And Belotic now... Rattling home both of those has nine points in this game. Other end of the floor now for Shaw Anderson to hand off the call and he gets it right back. Anderson sees a seam, splits it, kicks it for three. Instead, Calvo will drive to the basket, can't get it to go. Roche rips it away and down the floor they go to Mastandrea. He pulls up for three. Josiah with the triple. And that's why he's here. That's why he's here, to come off the bench with you threes. Big triple there from Josiah Mastandrea. One-point game. Khan left unattended. He's going to kick it back up to Paulson. They go to the corner, and that shot well off the mark by Anderson. Shaw. There's Pilata, and he handles a lot in the half court. He goes up to right. Now to Penny. Shot clock's down to six for David Penny, working with the crossover move on Moffitt. And the ball turned over as some big wingspan there from Seattle Pacific gets some fingertips on the basketball. 
Here's Cavill, pushing underneath, turned over. And Pallotta leading the break down the floor, right for the lay-in, he can't get it to go. Rush is there, and Julian can't beat the whistle, but he does get fouled. So positive things happening for SFU off the break. You can see Will and Jamal there talking. Looked like the alley oop didn't quite land the way they wanted, but again, Julian Rose, second chance points. Rose has come out of nowhere. Absolutely. On two or three occasions, you're right, Jake. He runs the floor so hard, he's so much more mobile that he's an active part of every fast break. And this is the guy, like he was not this this way two years ago. The last time SFU, you know, had GNAC action, he's just been a totally different player. Totally different player. And as he told me, the light really went on during that COVID canceled season. And he was in lockdown for, he, he counted all his lockdown days and all his work that he did. He's counted every calorie for, I think, almost three years now. It's amazing. And it really shows, clearly. <laughs> it shows, lost 75 pounds. Oh, reverse is going to go and a move there by, by, uh, by uh, the leading scorer on this team, uh, Devontae Moffitt, excuse me. Great basket for him. 39 to 38 the score for the Falcons. Here's Bolada. Gets dispossessed of the ball. SFU gets it back. Three ball hoisted. Mastandrea from the corner just off the mark. Rescued underneath the rush, and Julian once again is going to get. Oh, is that. I think they're going to call it a charge. Yeah, they're going to call it a charge. I think that's a tough call. He's going up. Tough there. call yeah, there. Looked like there was some movement under the basket. I don't think he ever had his feet set, but nonetheless, they're going to give it to him. So keep it at a one-point game here. The Seattle Pacific basketball. Down they go in the post. Anderson, double team comes quickly. Great job there by Wright and Roche on that double team. Simon Fraser, a bit of a rocky road getting out of their end, but they will bring it across half court with Penny. Roche on the wing. Julian directing some traffic as he bodies his way against Samore and lays it up and in with a hook shot. Man. So a lead now for Simon Fraser. Such soft hands from Julian Roche. Beautiful help by him. Definitely the soft hands coming in handy there as Roche scores it. Right to the rack goes Moffat. He gets fouled. He truly falls into the uh, can't stop him, just hope to contain him category because he's so explosive off the dribble. Yeah, he's a really creative scorer, him and Cavill. You can see why these guys are <laughs> the leading scorers for their team. It looks like the entire offense goes through those two. Yeah, that's a great point. So Moffitt from the free throw line starts it off with a make. Knots this game at 40. We mentioned 10 lead changes in that opening half. This is a tightly contested game and once again another lead change here. Seattle Pacific now with a 41 to 40 lead. Penny, hand off to Bellotta. Demaculangan now checked back into the game with the basketball. A real guard look here. Three guard look for Simon Fraser. Pallotta driving. Oh, off the window and he gets a contact. Will feeling it. Oh man, he almost came over here. I hope he's all right. Oh. Uh, cramping up a bit, yeah. I think, here. We hope that's all it is, but what a play by Will. Cuts to his left, strong finish, off the glass, potential and one. We just hope he's okay here. It he's like. doing a terrific job here. We're going to take a short break. A timeout call. We'll take a short timeout, and we'll be back with more from the West Gym in just a moment. I am here to build bridges. I'm here to promote inclusion. To embrace diversity. To learn from others. I'm here to support my community. I'm here to lift people up. To engage. 
to listen. I am here to grow. And we're back with you here at the West Gym, Howard Samura. GNAC men's basketball. Jake Hall as well along as we get into the thick of the second half and uh, talk about the lead changes, Jake. I mean, this is like 12, 13 lead changes into it now. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of the polar opposite of last game for them. Last game, they would have these big stretches and then last game kind of climb back and then a big stretch again. This has just been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth all game. It's hard to keep up, but Will Blada looks like he's all right, first and foremost, which is really important for SFU. I'm sure Steve Hansen was holding his breath a little bit. Yeah, we talked about that. He got fouled underneath the basket. I think could sense his calves cramping up and just wanted to keep active. Yeah. And he ran a loop, and he came right up to us here at our broadcast location. Uh, timeout later, Will Blada now back out there to shoot from the stripe. And he... Oh, and he goes right down. I think he's all right. It he, looks like he's he, okay. He's okay, but he sure went down oh, quickly man. there. Yeah, and he's subbed out right away. And he's <laughs> subbed out. Yeah, we're he, not risking anything, I think, if you're Steve Hansen. And we'll see how that affects the chemistry here on the floor because he's been very, very dominant with the ball in tandem with Julian Roche. And here comes Seattle Pacific now with Cavill. Cavill back up top to Paulson, gets it back. Harry on the baseline. Works to Samore. The American University transfer with the turnaround shot doesn't go. Cavill underneath Samore wants to lay it up and in. Simon Fraser dodging a bit of a bullet there. Looked like there's a bit of contact there. Could have gone either way, but uh, SFU escaping there after a couple of good chances from SPU. So Simon Fraser dodges it and they take the ball with a two point lead. 15 minutes left in this basketball game. David Penny commanding the Mast Andrea. He'll get it back. Penny off the row screen. Julian steps into the three and just off the mark. Great rebound underneath by Lyons. He crashes to the floor and so does Demacu Langan. Looks like SFU got a timeout, maybe? Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Seattle Pacific called the timeout. Some great hustle by Simon Fraser. Now let's talk about Jordan Lyons. I mean, you know, I'm a little bit surprised that he hasn't been able to find the same offensive success he had early in the season because he's such a talented kid. You know, it was interesting when I talked to Steve Hansen about him. Uh, towards the beginning of the year, he said, like, he's a guy that... You know, he's a D1 transfer, right? So you would think he has this big ego, and he's like, I need to play starting minutes. I need this, this, this. He's like, I'll be your sixth man. I'll be your seventh man. I'll oh, be your wow. power forward. I'll be your center. I'll be your small. Like, very adaptable. And uh, I think what really stands out with him is just his athleticism. And if you watch him in the pregame, he's doing through the legs. Like, it looks like Vince Carter out there, this guy. <laughs> so, um, you know, for him, yeah, maybe, maybe he needs a little bit more uh, time. And I think... You know, especially right now, we're seeing Will stretch out. But if Will's out for any amount of time, that's probably his one-for-one -one replacement would be Jordan Lyons. And he had a beautiful rebound there. Uh, it didn't lead to anything, but uh, it's great to hear that story, though. That's a great insight. I mean, you talk about a kid who comes from a D1 school. He's from Mississippi Valley State. And for football fans of the NFL variety of the day with the San Francisco 49ers, but that's Jerry Rice's old school. That's right. so cool to see. And, uh, yeah, let's see what kind of role Jordan Lyons plays as he comes back out on the floor with his team wearing number five for the Simon Fraser team. And this is also that small lineup that you mentioned, the three-guard look with Jordan kind of as that stretch power four and then Julian at, uh, at center. And if Simon Fraser can move the basketball, we talked about that. The three-point shooting threats abound. Everybody out there can shoot the three. 
and maybe a real quick way to, for Simon Fraser to get an offensive spark in this tight basketball game in which they lead 43 to 41. Looks like they're dealing with some shot clock issues, perhaps. Oh, we got it all ironed out now oh, as yeah. they have Penny inbound to the basketball, 17 on the shot clock. Quickly to Rose underneath, Julian lays it up and in. He's having a day today, isn't he? You love to see execution coming out of a timeout, and uh, boy, that was, a, that was a beautiful play to have Roche all alone for the land. Simon Fraser's four-point lead, one of the largest of the night. Samore, quickly now to Moffitt. Devontae with some upfakes in the paint. He goes to Khan for three and doesn't even draw iron. Quickly down the floor. Here's Jordan Lawrence. Oh, and Khan got there really quickly to disrupt him. Sean Hoist and it's going to go, and that's Josiah Mastandrea. Oh, what did I say? Very streaky shooter, but when he's on, he's on. Yeah, he can be deadly. You're right about that, and they will call for time with Seattle Pacific. But just like that, Jake, we talked about what was potential as we identified the talent on the floor, and look at that now. It's a seven-point lead, largest of the game. And I think that all started for SFP on the defensive end, right? They gave up... Uh, it was kind of like a last second attempt at a three and it was an air ball, but immediately Julian Roche gets the ball, chucks it like a quarterback down to Jordan Lyons and it got a little bit clumsy after that and somehow the ball ended up to Josiah, but again, great defense leads to good offense. Yeah, you're yeah, exactly right about that. Yeah, I love the way Roche is just so involved. We've seen Julian here for a number of seasons. Finally, we're seeing this older Julian Roche in the, in the, in the physical shape he wants to be in to reveal everything you know that he's capable of doing and, and you know even just seeing him on the court you know it, it, not that he would throw a tantrum before but he would be more visibly frustrated he's very relaxed very calm but still has a bit of that intensity that makes him such a good player yeah that's a great take on julian roche and of course came here from santa clara university Not one you want to see there. A quick foul called on Mastandrea. And Josiah's big three that he just hit before that timeout, of course. Uh, Josiah did that at Douglas College when they went to the national final at CCAAs. Here's Moffitt. Lulls everybody to sleep. Goes right to the rack. Can't get it to go. Ripped away by Demaculangan. Skipped down the floor to Penny. In transition. David Penny can't get it to go. And there's Roche again. Another second chance from Julian Roche. And he's the reason why this lead is the way it is right now. It's all Julian. And you talked about the nimbleness, right? He runs the floor like a guard. That's why he's rewarded by running the break and getting those finishes. Here's Samore. Oh, nice move by Samore as he gets to the basket. Coming off the bench, the big man, able to score it. He's got the 70s NBA look there, those uh, floppy locks <laughs> and the mustache. Looks like Bill Walton. <laughs> <laughs> David Penny. Simon Fraser discovering a lot about itself here as Jazz Singh rehabilitates that knee, finding some different combinations here. Penny trying not to turn it over, but he does. Khan gets it quickly. Ooh, and Damakulangan steps in on defense to Penny for the layup, and he scores it! What a play from the freshman. What a heads-up play. Beautiful play from Elliott. Wow, Damakulangan walking the razor's edge there. So close to picking up a foul, but playing that gutsy defense right at half court. Simon Fraser dialing up some half-court pressure, getting the turnover. And here's a steal, Mass Andrea, Josiah down the floor, and he will lay it up and in. And all of a sudden, it's an 11-point lead for Simon Fraser. I'm sensing a timeout right now. I think they're going to call it. You have to, because it's just been an SFU run like crazy, but SFU defense leading to offense. It's exciting to see. Wow. Yeah, there is a definite edge. This largely guard-oriented group is they're bringing tempo, right? And they're getting the big man to run the floor, and he's excited. And the thing that I've noticed with SFU compared, you know, from this year compared to previous years is when they get the ball on a turnover, they go. It's not a slow down, we're going to call it play. They're just going. And, you know, sometimes you're going to get a turnover, but a lot of the time you're going to see what we just saw. Fast break points. And Julian Roche again. Julian Roche being 
so big, so fast, so quick, running up and down the court like he is. He's a weapon for them. 18 points so far. Oh, he's got 18 now. Wow. And 10 rebounds and an assist. So <laughs> it's like he's having a day. And we're starting to see, again, Josiah. We're starting to see Elliot. A lot of excitement right now. Well, of course, we talked about this Seattle Pacific team coming in on their two-game win streak. That win over St. Martin, 68-65, to was especially impressive, Jake. I mean, St. Martin's really took it to Simon Fraser, right? And St. Martin's has taken it to pretty much everybody. They're the number one team in the GNAC right now. Provided SFU, uh, if SFU wins, I think they brought them today. But, yeah, St. Martin's is no joke. So, you know, SBU is a quality opponent for SFU. This is a really good barometer for how they're going to be the rest of the year. If they can hang on against a team like SBU, this is probably their best win of the year, I would have to say. Well, let's not count our chickens yes. down here, but we uh, don't want to incur the wrath of the basketball gods here at the West Gym, but I know what you're talking about, Jake. Simon Fraser shooting 58.3% on the game, but they're shooting 67% from the field over the first uh, seven and a half minutes of the second half, and they're limiting Seattle Pacific to 33% and only nine shots from the field, so we'll see if the Falcons can't get their offensive game going. Here's Khan in the half court. Anderson. Three ball blocked out of bounds. And that is Jordan Lyons. Jordan Lyons, uh, I think everybody taking a cue here from the excitement that Roche is bringing and everybody else. And Jordan Lyons with a nice play. Most athletic guy on the floor. As you mentioned, can jump out of the gym and really has shown some huge flashes this year. There is. Paulson with a three ball that's not going to go. Underneath, Anderson unable to score it. And I think uh, Cavill might get called for the foul there. It looked like they did call him. I don't. I think it was just kind of a jumble to get the ball. I'm not sure if it was a call or not. But either way, SMB gets another chance to extend this lead. So Cavill gets called for the foul. His second of the game. And credit Jamal Wright for some nice work. Frustrating. The Seattle Pacific veteran. Here's Jordan Lyons, quickly to Mastandrea. Everybody's contributing to this Simon Fraser surge. Here's Bellotta, the fake. Turn around off the post move. Quick little short pass to Lyons. Lyons to the basket is rejected there by Anderson. So Seattle Pacific now with the basketball. It looked like a little bit of a force there from Jordan Lyons, the pump and go, but... That was a really clogged lane. I don't know if he was going to get a good look or the look that he wanted. We talked about the abilities of the Seattle Pacific team and the streak they're on right now. And the fact that they've just played a ton more games, more game reps than Simon Fraser has. Impressive the way Simon Fraser is playing. Oh, and there's Demarcus Langan. A guard challenging on the baseline. I don't think I've seen a guard do that in a long time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Impressive, but great ball movement. They find Cavill underneath the basket for the lay-in, and that was a great job in the half court. Some great vision by Seattle Pacific. 54 to 45, the score. It's a nine-point lead for us. If you they've got the basketball as we approach the midway mark of the second half. Mastin Drea pulls up the three. Oh, and Ryan Skies to get the tip. Wow, and again, that's that athleticism that he brings. What a leap from Jordan Lyons. A lot of athleticism for us up here. I agree, and second chance opportunities have been just a keystone here for Simon Fraser in the second half. Ball movement. Anderson. He's going to get it back to three. Loves that shot. Doesn't miss by much into the hands of Bellotta. Wilford Bellotta. Demacchio Langan has some nice wingspan from that guard spot. He showed you that with that block on the baseline. Mastandrea. Oh. Three ball. Offensive foul. Jordan Lyons getting called for the foul. Didn't see it. Didn't see it either. It looked like uh, tried to set a screen, but a moving screen. Away from the ball. So Lyons getting called for his first of the game. Fourth on the team. Here's Moffitt. Nice move, nice take, and he's going to switch that home. 
Devontae with a great move there. Simon Fraser with a nine point lead, but they gotta, they gotta mind the momentum here because this Seattle Pacific team can get hot in a hurry. Here's Penny to Lyons, quickly to Nassandrea. There's a shot clock, here's 10, Bellotta takes it, puts his head down, gets blocked by Cavill. Barry Cavill with a great job defensively. Speaking of athleticism, Cavill is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, this guy is a great player. <laughs> he really is. That old school guy that can do everything. That shot from, I believe that is Amore with a miss from three. And you can see, for SFU, they're trying to slow this game down at this point, right? They don't want a crazy uh, momentum shift all of a sudden as the game is wrapping up. We'll see as they definitely decide to dial down the tempo, you're right about that, and milk the clock a bit down to nine minutes left in this game. Here's Julian for three. There's a lot of moving parts for a seven-footer, but he sure looks smooth uh, taking the three ball. No, he's a good shooter. It's probably not his, his number one shot, but that's an open look, and I think Steve Hansen's going to let him take that every time. Julian has definitely expanded his uh, horizons here on the court this season. Penny, commanding, has Cavill in his face. Kicks it back. The three ball is not going to go for Aston Grea. So an 11 point lead down to nine. And here's Samore. The con, they move it around the horn. Moffat, great move to the rock, and he's going to lay it up and in. He's going to draw the contact as well. That was quite impressive. That was amazing to not only leap from where he leaped, but also to get the contact and then still finish the play. I mean, you can see SBU has a lot of talent on the floor, but a lot of athleticism. Might be the two most athletic teams in the GNAC. You may, may be right there as Lions comes off the floor. But from an 11 point lead, uh, you know, Seattle Pacific with a make from Moffitt here can make it a six point game. So, Falcons' uh, hopes are rising here. And he's going to rattle that one home. So, a two possession game out of nowhere. At a little eerily similar to the game earlier this week where SFU, you know, at one point was up by, I think, 11 points. And now it's gotten half. So well, you know what? It's funny. I watched. I watched the broadcast. Listened to your call. Great call on the game. And you said that as well. At that very point, when they had a ten-point lead, that that Coach Hansen was starting to slow down the tempo a bit. You know, and I think Fairbanks came back and actually took a lead down the stretch. So we'll see how they adjust that. Maybe they need to, you know, keep keep the foot on the gas here a bit longer. Well, you can definitely see when they're bringing the ball up the court, they're taking the full 24 seconds. They're really taking their time. But, you know, at a detriment, it might be, if you know, if you start missing these shots, then now you have less time. Exactly. So you, you still have to execute, regardless of how much time you take to bring the ball over half court. So, see what the SFU does here with a six-point lead. Eight, minute, eight and a half minutes remaining. Oh. Penny, great look underneath the Roche. What a feed from David Penny, and again, Julian ready to go every time, but David Penny, excellent vision from him. Yeah, love to see that chemistry building to that level of trust on the floor. Underneath they go, and that was Blackman unable to score it. Demaculang and jump stop kick right for three, and it doesn't go. Great long reach there by Roche. Back up top to Nastandrea. Bit of a dangerous pass back. Now they're going to slow it down. <laughs> You're right about that. That, uh, that rebound, it went off the iron. They got a new shot clock. And here's Roche. Good Roche put it on the floor. Draw the contact. Can't get it to go. Julian Roche. And that's something we would not have seen. I swear to God, that's not a completely close. different player. <laughs> oh, man. It's fun to watch him, though. It is he's a really smart guy, too. And, and you can see he's not just his big body. He really does have a lot of basketball skill. And, yeah, it's exciting to watch him play. And he's really carrying SFU so far with 20 points. And right by our location here, we see Webb Lotta working with a roller, trying to keep limber. Yeah, he's a guy you kind of want to have at the end of the game, don't you think? 
I definitely agree with you there. And, you know, we talked about from the time he had the end with opportunity and ended up here, he hasn't been as active out there. I think it's bothering him a bit, Jake. I mean, but are you also encouraged by the fact that since that point, we've seen so much good play, not only from Julian, but from that guard group, right? They've all stepped up. Yeah, and it's, you know, obviously, yeah, Julian has 20 points, but it's spread pretty evenly after that. So, uh, you know, David on that last play, that pick and roll uh, with Julian, great vision. Uh, Elliot to uh, again, three-point shooter, but also they don't have defensive end and turning the ball, uh, you know, turning it from a turnover to points for us a few, and then Josiah with those two threes. So you're right, like, it's it's a vast, like, the team, the five, like, the starting five and, and just the team in general is so different from two years ago. I, and I really do believe that this is the best team that they've had in the NCAA era. I don't think it's any question. Oh, and that, you know what? And that's not a knock against any one single player. But if you go top to bottom, I mean, I've, I've been watching them too, and I completely agree with you. It's height, it's size, it's athleticism, it's, it's everything across the board. I think this is the most talented group I've seen. It's also the handle that number three has on the ball. He has as strong a dribbling hand as we've seen in, in the conference, I think, among leader guards in this in, the, uh, in this conference. Michael Provenzano was tremendous as well. Mm-hmm. To go from Provenzano to get Penny and just keep going with their point guard is an amazing thing. Julian, and you look at Julian Roche and the way he's running, he's not the least bit fatigued. There's no body language that suggests he's even tired. Offensive foul looks like a big break for SFU. So it looks like Moffat got called for a hook. Looked like he hooked him. Yeah. So interesting. 7.28 remaining. David Penny. Mastandrea with a feed to Roche. Roche, dynamic turnaround. No, oh, he switches oh, it to oh, Julian Roche. You see the arc on that shot too? Amazing. Julian Roche with the turnaround. That's a seven-footer. With guard-type skills right now, Julian Rose showing the world what he's all about on the basketball court. Ooh, and a big three there as Anderson knocks it down from the corner. Seattle Pacific is not going away. Nine-point deficit. Here's Penny. Three ball, cue and hit! Josiah Mastandrea knocks down the triple. And he's having a good day from the three line. My goodness. Ooh, and Julian uh, went up to try and block that one. Couldn't get it to go. Seattle Pacific gets two of those back quickly. You feel like the six minutes is not going to go by fast <laughs> enough for us to do. My goodness. Yeah, it's an eternity to go here still for both these teams. That three ball from uh, Mastandrea clutch, but also great delivery of the basketball for Penny is showing you more of the same right now. Well, I jinxed him because it's a turnover to Khan, two on one down the floor. Sharif Khan turns it over. He steps on the end line and things are going Simon Fraser's way. They have a 10 point lead with 5.51 left. Oh man, if, if you're SFU, conservative, be smart, no care of those passes. And play it safe with Julian Roche. A test of how they're coming together, as Jake says, how much of a veteran team have they become now four games into their GMAC season? A ton of practices, not a lot of live game reps in the conference with this group. But they're looking good tonight. Here's Roche in the high post. The hand off to Penny. David elevates high archer, and he's going to nail it. David Penny now. More than just a passer. Great offensive weapon altogether. They are hitting everything here. Here's Moffitt, though. He penetrates and dishes Cavill, the jumper, in and out. The big rebound there. The Macalang and thought he had it. Khan, dribble drive, floater. Up and under he goes. Cavill can't get it to go. It's a pinball underneath, and that's got to be a foul against Paulson as he comes crashing in and knocks Mastandre to the pine. And you can see for SFU, Cavill is a problem. He's a guy who can 
get his own rebound. He can shoot. He can, you know, he's athletic. They got to figure out a way to get him out of the paint so they can get some of their own rebounds. Well, he's the guy you wish was on your own team. He is so complete. But Josiah asked Andrea. Simon Fraser had two trips to the free throw line in the first half. I think these will be the eighth and ninth trips of their second half, I believe. John Sidhu, number 12, a 6'5 sophomore from Issaquah, Washington, now into the game. says Moffitt knocks it down. He'll cut it to 11. We're down to 449 remaining. Simon Fraser having to cope with some three-quarter court pressure here. And if you're SFU, you got to be smart here with your fouls as well. Don't want to get in the bonus. And they already are. My yeah, bad. We're, already, we're already there with the seven, but it's even more important now. <laughs> especially against this good free throw shooting Seattle Pacific team. And there it comes right into our broadcast location, a collision. What a frenetic. We're going to have to file for some danger pay here oh in, a, in a few moments, but the action getting hot and heavy here right in front of the minor officials table. Bottles of hand sanitizer flying everywhere here in the West Gym. 4.31 remaining, it's an 11 point lead. Cavill right in front of our broadcast location is set to inbound the ball. And here come the Falcons. Sensing a little bit of desperation with the time. They put up a jumper and Anderson has been clutch. He knocks down another three, they get a steal. And Simon Fraser wants time and they want to talk things over. Yeah, I don't blame them, I think. It's an eight point game now and they are the blood in the water here. You finally get the message that Simon Fraser wants a timeout. 419 left, an eight-point game. We'll take a short break here and be back with the final moments of the fourth quarter from the West Gym. I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to create. To innovate. To do research that matters. I am here to continue asking questions. To continue learning. To expand my horizons. I am here to grow. with you at the West Gym. We'll take a look at the score sheet and tell you that the leading scorers in this game, Devontae Moffitt with 18 points leading Seattle Pacific. Shaw Anderson with 16 and he's 4 of 11 but he's been heating up from 3 and 11 points for Harry Cavill. For Simon Fraser, Julian Roche with 24 points and 11 rebounds. 14 points for uh, Josiah Mastandrea. He's got 14 points in, off the bench. 12 for Balada and 11 for David Penny. Yeah, and for SFU, Balada back is absolutely massive. So we'll see if he can kind of take control here, maybe slow things down 
and get some second chance points. Just keep building this lead because eight points does not feel like a, a big lead to me. I don't know about you. Yeah, with the way they're hitting the three ball and the, and the desperation with which they're playing, I completely agree with you, Jake. So we'll see how they execute here down the stretch. Value the basketball. Feynman Fraser came out, as Jake said, with just a ton of turnovers in that opening half but have since really cleaned up their act. They need to keep that same mentality here down the stretch drive. Penny across court to Bellotta. Will steps back for three. Cavill impeded that shot. And I think that's a situation where SFU, again, they're trying to find the perfect shot, trying to slow things down, kill some clock, but I think they just held it on just a little bit too long, and you're not gonna get what you're gonna, you know, you're not gonna get the shot you want. Uh, from Will with three guys in his face. It's just not going to happen. So bad, bad possession from SFU. Yeah, not, not the most productive. See if they can't dig in here from their perspective and get a stop. Cavill with a great little crossover move. Got right to the baseline. Skips it back out. Oh, and a three ball hoisted. And that is a foul. And Bijan Sidhu is going to get three free throws. Oh, that is a killer foul from David Penny. Three chances at the stripe. Oh man, and you can see Steve Hansen not agreeing with it, but not ideal, not ideal for SFU. They really have to have a strong. Well, the only, uh, well, Sidhu has mm. only taken four free throws all season. He's nailed all four of them. So <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Shooting a thousand from the free throw line. He's now five for five on the season. Yeah, they're it's still arguing clearly about the, if he followed through with his leg or not, but. Nonetheless, a tough call for Simon Fraser. And Bijan Sidhu, the stats aren't lying. He hadn't missed this season, and he's hit his first two. He's made it a six-point game. He can make it a five-point game with a make right here. Flawless technique for number 12 off the bench, especially with a clock stop, Jake. That's even more deadly. Yeah, five points is not insurmountable by any stretch. That's with 3.30 left, you're right. They're going to have to play really smart here. Here's right. And off to Will. Now Penny. There's Roche for that high screen. He'll take the ball back. Quickly to Bellotta. Dribble drive on the baseline. Will rises. They're going to call the charge. Blocking foul called against Seattle Pacific. It's going to send, uh, well, I should send Bellotta to the free throw line. Wow. That was quite the impact, too. But again, Will Bellotta, that pump fake, that drive, getting to the line at this point is just massive for SVU. It's a win. Well, there is that kind of Derrick Henry kind of uh, <laughs> look to him that, you know what, when he gets going, you don't want to be in his way. It takes a lot to stand in against Will Bellotta. And hitting that keeps it a two possession game for SFU. And a big one coming up here to make it a seven point game if he can hit it. And Bellotta oh. misses it. Getting down to three minutes remaining. Moffitt working off the Anderson screen. Whistle blows. Yeah, they're saying that Bellotta grabbed him. So Will Bellotta getting called for the foul. He's talking to the official for a bit more instruction on what happened. But he'll come out of the game. It's his only his second foul of the game. But it's going to send uh, Moffat to the free throw line. Josiah Mastandrea spells him. Exactly three minutes left in a six-point game. Buckle up here for the stretch drive as Moffat hits the first. Boy, this SPU team can shoot it from the free throw line. What a, and what an attribute it is at this point in the game. It, it's going to win you a lot of games down the stretch for sure. 74% free throw shooter heading in. Moffat hits them both. He makes it a four-point game. And I think for SFU, you want the ball to be in David Penny's hands. He's going to be the guy that's going to ice the game out if you're SFU. Exactly. Your leader, your general, great handle on the basketball. Shot clock down to about 15 here. 2.45 left in this game. There's Roche's high screen as usual. Corner to Mastandrea. Josiah 
fakes his way to a three and is well off the mark. Oh, great Christine. steal by Penny! Playing that free safety role, he just jumps in there, Masandrea. Here's right to the basket and he jabs it home! How did he get so open? It doesn't matter though, Classic Who. What a play. The Red Sea poured it and right went right to the rock and laid it down with authority, 71 to 65. Loose ball on the floor, Demaculangan hits the pine. A scrambly play oh. there, but they got the timeout. But what a what a series of events for SFU. You have a crazy shot from Josiah, not really uh, the shot you want to take. But then David Penny, like you said, like a free safety, like Ed Reed, just oh. hawking the ball and finding uh, Jamal. And what an authoritative dunk. Again, SFU hasn't dunked the ball a lot in previous years. This is a team that actually can dunk the ball. It's exciting to watch. Yeah, and it just comes right in the flow of play, and you, you can just sense it in that split second before, take off for the dunk and just lay it down, and right with a big one there. He's logged some minutes. He's trying to find his identity on the floor, right? You can sense that this is a guy ready for a breakout. Yeah, I mean, what an influx of talent for SFU from the transfer portal, right? Getting uh, Jordan Lyons and Jamal, right? Both really long, really athletic guys. Uh, it's exciting to watch these guys. Like, as, as a team, again, I don't think we've seen this kind of athleticism from SFU. Having guys who can just straight up dunk. Just absolutely, uh, you know, guys who can play the entire court. It's fun to watch. Jamal Wright, he's 6'6", weighs 195. He's a junior from Toronto, and he's a transfer from Division One Maryland Eastern Shore. And it shows. It yeah. really does show. Yeah, exactly. And the transfer portal, if it lands you the right, you can get you can get better in that one heck of a hurry. And I, I, I hasten to say that with all the hurdles everyone's had to go through here over the course of the uh, the virus here. But boy, Simon Fraser has got some great young players in their system right now. 71 to 65, 205 remaining. Here's Moffitt to Anderson. Goes back to Devontae. Simon Fraser in his zone here. Over the zone is Anderson. He knocks on another triple. Oh, man. That's the one thing SFU can't give up is threes at this point. you got to defend top of the three-point line. Shaw Anderson drops another dagger from downtown to top Burnaby Mount. 71 to 68, 140 left in the game. This used to be an 11 point lead, it's now down to three. Penny to Josiah, Nastandrea finding right, back to the basket, turn around, move from right. Oh, can't get it to go, what a great <laughs> run there by Penny to scoop up the loose ball. And as if he's gonna slow it down, they're gonna take the entire 15 seconds here. You saw Julian Roche instructing his point guard, <laughs> slow it down. Here's Penny, pulls up for three, it's blocked. Paulson with a basketball. A pack of Falcons were there to seal that. Trump at half court. Down to the corner. Down to 52 seconds here. Moffitt gets into the paint. Ooh, and he scores it. And was he fouled from behind? I'm trying to understand. I think there was confusion whether it was a charge or a block, but I think they're gonna say it was a charge. Well, he said 13 with a foul, and it's up on the board. So yeah, the basket, no basket. Offensive foul, Simon Fraser basketball, 47.4 remaining. What a play from Penny. A break for SFU. Penny, they're imploring Penny to take the timeout. So, possession for SFU. Obviously, Steve Hansen trying to call a timeout, can't get it. But we still have the, or SFU still has the possession, it looks like. But he's getting mugged up the court. They gotta do something. Wow. They can't just have David Penny by himself getting triple teamed. Well, SPU disguised that they brought that trap really quickly. Oh, man. They're, they are pulling out all the stops as well, as you would expect here down the stretch. 38.3 seconds left. 
Jake, what a classic game this has been. Wow. Well, it's just been a blessing to have the game being played before us with all the trouble we're having with the, with the variant right now. It's so great to see this Simon Fraser team and this program that, that Steve Hansen has rebuilt from the ashes really start to come to life. And you see what these guys are all about. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about a team that, you know, five, six years ago was a, a one-win team, two-win team. Look at them now. You know, they're competing against the best team in the GNAC, arguably. So, and not only competing, but winning. Uh, this game has, has had everything. You've had dunks, you've had blocks, you've had diving on the court for the loose ball. It's been a lot of fun. Well, with four minutes remaining, there had been 15 lead changes. That's ridiculous. I, mean, it's been a, yeah. I think that's probably <laughs> still true because Simon did build the bigger lead. But what a terrific game we've seen here. From the Simon Fraser perspective and this broadcast crew and all the people that follow Simon Fraser men's basketball, it would be a tremendous boost to this program, as we mentioned, the first of nine games in 18 days to get a victory here would be huge for this Simon Fraser team tonight. And again, against the number one team in the GNAC, right? We can't stress that enough that you're, this is the, the barometer, right? You, you know, SFU losing by 30 to SMU, chop that up to a bad game, but if you beat SBU, shows your heart, shows your character. You are exactly right on all counts there as this game is set to resume. Demacke Langan inbounding the basketball to Penny. Penny wants to get across half court, and this time he will. Down to 31 seconds. Oh, the ball stolen away by Cavill. He wants Paulson, but instead it goes to Mastandrea, and they're going to foul Josiah with 23 seconds left. Number one is going to step up from 15 and shoot some free throws. And that's someone you, if you're SFU, you want him to go to the stripe. He's one of your best shooters. But wow, that was a crazy turn of events for SFU. They got the ball over to the corner, and I think there was just a turnover there. But again, Josiah like, Mastandrea shooting 83% from the stripe this season. Uh, your best three point or free throw shooter. Huge, huge play from him. Two for two, big free throws. Two possessions now. SPU's got a lot of ground to cover. Moffat into the paint. The kick for three off the side iron, tipped by Cavill, I believe, or Paulson back to Moffat for three. He hits the three ball and falls to the ground. With 10.5 remaining, the scoreboard shows 73-71. And how big is this free throw right now? This is the game here. As if you putting in Jordan Lyons, your best rebounder, arguably. Pretty smart. Everything set up here situationally as Moffat steps up. This to make it a one-point game with 10.5 seconds left. And he's going to swish it. Subbing right back in is Josiah. Little gamesmanship. So that guard trio of Demacke Langens at the inbound along with Penny and Mastandrea. Penny, and they're gonna foul. Oh, they are trying to trap him, trying to rip it away, and they finally call a foul with 6.8 left. You gotta think, it probably would have made more sense to just foul him right off the bat. They wasted about five seconds there. And David Penny's not a bad free throw shooter, 74%. 77% actually on, on right. the season, so. Penny with an opportunity here to create some separation. 6.8 seconds. Penny makes good on the first. And Penny makes it a three-point game with 6.8 seconds left. 
Here comes Moffitt. No foul, no foul to call. He puts up the shot, and it's off the mark, and Simon Fraser will hang on for the victory. 75-72, Jake, a huge victory for SFU. I mean, that's just art. That's, you know, we talked about 15 lead changes, but to come out on top, you know, to get the necessary buckets you need to do, but the defense at the end, and also free throws, hitting your free throws, absolutely massive for SFU. What a game for SFU, as you can see, so excited. Again, you're beating the number one team in the GNAC. This is a big statement win from SFU. What a tremendous way to start off the toughest stretch of the season for Simon Fraser. They come through with a 75-72 victory. They face the hometown crowd here in the West Gym. Clutch basketball down the stretch drive, and this is how a basketball team can grow. Tremendous effort fought by SFU to hang on for the three-point victory. What a tremendous job they do here tonight. We would love to give you some final numbers here. If we can, we will uh, endeavor to get those. Our leading scorer with 24 points, Julian Roche, 11 rebounds, 24 points, 11 rebounds. What a terrific job he did tonight. The other double-figure scores we can let you know about, Josiah Mastandrea. He had a 16-point night, 13 points apiece for the point guard, David Penny, and the forward, Will Bolada. They are the double-figure scorers, but what an overall team effort. It was an incredible way to get a victory here. Simon Fraser, wow, they come through. Jake, before we leave you here tonight, and thanks for being here with us, some of your thoughts on the final numbers. You know, I think it was a bit of a rough start for us at you, where, you know, it looked like, you know, we were talking about it. Is it the, you know, is the jitters you're playing this really good team? Is it the fact you haven't played too many games at home? What was it? But they really found their groove towards the end of the first half, and then they just took off in the second half. And again, they had a, at one point, I think the largest lead was about 11 points. But it wasn't always perfect. And that's the, what I, I love about this team is that, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be perfect for them to win. They can, you know, lose momentum, gain momentum. They can turn it on, turn it off. It's exciting to watch. And, you know, I think for Steve Hansen, he probably would have wished it was just an 11-point lead the entire game. But to come back... Uh, yeah, it shows a lot of heart and character, and I think this is a team that can do some damage in the playoffs. I really do. Well, they push their record now to 3-1. and one. Meanwhile, Seattle Pacific will fall to 3-4. and four. The next action, Tuesday in Ellensburg against Central Washington, 4 o'clock. You can get that through uh, GNAC Sports. If you want to watch that game, and of course, if you can't make it out here next week, Jake and I will be here with the call Thursday and Saturday. Home games against Central Washington Thursday, Northwest Nazarene on Saturday, both 7 o'clock starts. We'll wrap it up there, but what an exciting evening. Absolutely, and I honestly, I can't wait. We have so much basketball ahead, like you said, so it's going to be a really busy February for us here at SFU. Simon Fraser ready to make their run. They signal the start of a huge stretch here. For Jacob Hall, for everybody on our broadcast here tonight thank you very much and uh, we hope you enjoyed the broadcast and again be with you again next week right here from the west gym atop burnaby mountain